My name is Chris Gilpin from the Laboratories, Diagnostics and Drug Resistance Unit of the Global TB Program at the World Health Organization in Geneva, Switzerland. My micro lecture today uh, is entitled Tuberculosis Bacteriology, and the presentation will cover which species of microbacteria comprise the Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, the classification of mycobacteria within the genus, some bacteriological characteristics of TB bacilli, and current WHO-endorsed TB diagnostic tools. The etiological agents of the disease tuberculosis are members of the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. The main organism within the complex is mycobacterium tuberculosis, but other species, such as Mycobacterium bovis, Mycobacterium microti, Mycobacterium africanum, Mycobacterium caneti, and Mycobacterium pinnipedii are also responsible for causing TB disease. The etiological agent of T tuberculosis was initially recognised by Robert Koch in 1882, and all of the organisms within the complex show acid fastness, a slow growing, and are important because of the public health implications associated with their transmission and ability to cause disease. It is estimated that one third of the world's population has been infected with Mycobacterium tuberculosis. In 2011, there were approximately 8.7 million new cases of active TB disease, resulting in roughly 1.4 million deaths. Furthermore, it is estimated that there are more than 500,000 cases of multidrug resistant TB. The genus Mycobacteria comprises not only the members of Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, but almost 100 other different mycobacterial species, referred to as non tuberculous mycobacteria, of which approximately 50 have the potential for causing human disease. The Runyon system of classification of members of the genus uses morphology, growth rates and pigmentation to classify the organisms within the genus. Non-tuberculous mycobacterium are broadly characterised into two main groups, rapid growing mycobacteria and slowly growing mycobacteria. The rapid growers are those that will grow on sheep blood agar or chocolate agar in under seven days. The main species within the group of rapidly growing mycobacteria include the Mycobacterium fortuitum complex, the Shaloni abscessus group, and Mycobacterium smegmatus. The Mycobacterium avium intracellular com cellulari complex is the predominant group of organisms among the slowly growing mycobacteria, which take at least seven days and up to several weeks to grow. Other important non-tuberculous mycobacteria with the potential for causing disease include Mycobacterium cansasi, Mycobacterium zanopi, and Mycobacterium ulcerans, which is responsible for causing Borrelli ulcer. There is an intermediate group of organisms which will take between 7 to 10 days for growth. Organisms within this group include Mycobacterium marinum, which is associated with fish tank or marine acquired granulomas, and Mycobacterium gordonii, a common environmental mycobacteria. In addition to growth rates, the pigmentation of mycobacteria is an important criteria for classification according to the Runyon scheme. There are three groups of mycobacteria classified according to pigmentation and are known as photochromogens, scotochromogens and non-chromogens. Photochromogens are those mycobacteria that produce pigment only following exposure to light. Scotochromogens are those organisms within the genus that produce pigment regardless of exposure to light. And thirdly, non-chromogens such as Mycobacteria tuberculosis do not produce any pigment. In addition, DNA-based methods including sequencing can be used to confirm the identification of non-tuberculous mycobacteria. Within the genus, the main pathogens that cause disease in humans, apart from Mycobacterium tuberculosis, are the non-cultivable cause of leprosy, Mycobacterium leprae, and Mycobacterium ulcerans. 
the main animal pathogens are Mycobacterium bovis, Mycobacterium avium, and Mycobacterium marinum. Many Mycobacteria are free living in the water and soil and only cause disease in humans or animals as opportunistic infections. Hence, the classification between human and animal pathogens is not a strict classification. Mycobacterium tuberculosis infection is acquired primarily from person-to-person -person transmission as opposed to infections with non-tuberculous mycobacteria which are primarily acquired from the environment and are not transmitted person to person. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is an obligate pathogen and requires a host in order to survive. The organisms are primarily transmitted from person to person by the inhalation of infectious droplets containing the tubercular bacilli from one person into the alveolar spaces of another person where they are subsequently ingested by the host macrophages. The development or elimination of disease depends on the microbicidal activity within the macrophages. Degenerated macrophages sensitise local lymphocytes and mobilise more macrophages to establish a dynamic turnover of engulfment and degeneration at the site of infection. At the site of engulfment and degeneration of the macrophages, a zone of lymphocytes and mononuclear cells surround a centre of necrosis with the development of a capsule of fibrous connective tissue. Extensiveness of disease depends on virulence of the organisms, the route of infection, the stage of the infection and the host susceptibility factors. The probability tuberculosis will be transmitted will depend on the infectiousness of the person with tuberculosis, the environment in which exposure occurs, is it in a closed environment or an outdoor area, the susceptibility of the host, are they immunocompetent or have some immunocompromising condition, and the duration of exposure and the virulence factors associated with the organism itself. Not all individuals infected with Mycobacterium tuberculosis will develop active TB disease. Approximately 10% of infected persons with a normal immune system develop TB at some point in their lifetime. The greatest risk for the development of active disease is within the first one to two years following infection. HIV co-infection is one of the strongest risk factors for the development of tuberculosis and HIV-infected individuals carry an annual risk of between 7 and 10 per cent for the development of active disease. In 2011, WHO estimated that there were approximately 1.1 million new cases among, of TB among persons living with HIV, resulting in roughly 430,000 deaths. Conditions that increase the risk of progression of tuberculosis infection to tuberculosis active disease not only include HIV infection, but substance abuse, recent infection, diabetes, silicosis, and immunosuppression associated with corticosteroids and other drugs. This slide shows some of the key characteristics of the cell of the TB bacilli. Importantly, the cell wall comprises an outer layer of mycolic acid, this outer layer of mycolic acid is a key reason why a combination of heat and phenol is required in order to stain the bacilli and allow the primary stain of carbofuxin to penetrate the cell wall for staining. Mycobacteria's acid fastness refers to the bacilli's resistant to decoloration with strong acids or acid alcohol once stained with the primary stain carbofuxin. Although the detection of acid fast bacilli is a key characteristic of TB bacilli and the primary diagnostic test for active tuberculosis, especially in resource limited settings, it is not specific for Mycobacterium tuberculosis as all Mycobacteria are acid fast. Mycobacteria have a slow generation time of approximately 24 hours compared to other common, or common environmental bacteria such as E. coli, which replicate every 20 minutes. 
This long generation time contributes to the chronicity of TB disease. Tuberculosis bacilli have natural resistance to common antibiotics. They have inherent resistance to penicillins. Because they are intracellular bacteria, they are protected by the acid environment of macrophages against drugs such as streptomycin. Spontaneous mutations occur every million to 100 million divisions, allowing populations of organisms resistant to individual drugs to emerge. They have high selection pressure once mutants do occur, and this is especially important for the key mycobacterial drugs, rifampicin and isoniazid. T tuberculosis is treated with multiple drugs, but the exposure to a single drug, either through poor adherence to treatment, inappropriate prescription, inadequate drug supply, or poor quality of drugs, can contribute to the development of drug resistance. Sputum smear microscopy remains the primary diagnostic tool for the diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis for all levels of the laboratory network. Commercial liquid culture is recognised as the reference standard method for bacteriological confirmation of tuberculosis. However, culture requires sophisticated laboratory infrastructure and therefore can usually only be performed at higher levels within the laboratory network. In 2008, WHO recommended the use of molecular line probe assays for the rapid detection of drug resistance against key anti-tuberculous drugs, rifampicin and isoniazid. This technology, although not requiring the sophistication of culture facilities, still requires at least intermediate level laboratories for testing. Since 2010, WHO has endorsed the M. tuberculosis rifampicin assay, which has the ability to rapidly diagnose tuberculosis and concurrently detect resistance to rifampicin in a single cartridge-based assay within two hours. This technology can be positioned at lower levels in the laboratory network and has the potential to replace microscopy as the primary diagnostic test for tuberculosis. WHO currently recommends the expert MTB RIF assay as the initial diagnostic test in persons at risk of drug-resistant TB or HIV-associated TB. Thank you for your interest in this presentation.